Hi again. This is the group of components that I was discussing in the last video and in this video I want to discuss uh, negative biasing and tank circuits. In the previous video I was just starting to talk about the negative biasing of the valves. In order for the valve to work correctly the grid has to be fed with a voltage that is negative relative to the cathode. That negative voltage is generated by means of the resistor in the cathode leg and I'll see if I can explain exactly how that's achieved. If we think of the valve as being a resistor and we hang it from a positive voltage rail now we connect to that the cathode resistor and we connect the bottom end of that resistor to the negative rail. I've put some numbers on there and uh, they're not the actual voltages, they're simply representative. So let's say that there's 6 volts on the top rail, so on the top of the resistor there's 6 volts and then the voltage reduces as we get down, uh, so it's 5 volts, 4 volts, 3 volts, and where the bottom resistor joins the top resistor that of course has got 3 volts on it and then the voltage carries on going down until it gets to 0 volts on the negative rail. Now let's put in a, a new working platform and we'll connect that to the 3 volt point and we'll connect the cathode of the valve to that uh, 3 volt point and we'll think of that as our new working platform. Now clearly the zero voltage at the bottom is uh, much less than the three volts of the uh, working platform. So let's call the working platform positive with respect to the negative of the lower platform. So anything that we connect to the lower platform is negative with regards to the working platform and here I've represented that uh, negative connection of the grid with uh, the symbol of the grid. As I say the uh, the numbers are not representative although the notion is uh, exactly correct. So hopefully you can see how these uh, purple components generate the negative biasing. The VHF aerial connects to the second turn of that uh, little coil that you see in the bottom left hand corner and that coil has six turns in it so it's not tuned uh, it's just acting uh, as a little auto transformer and feeding every signal that it receives into the control grid. That red circuit uh, above the anode of V1 is a tuned radio frequency circuit. The little capacitor with the dotted line going to the other capacitor is uh, a tuning capacitor and the dotted line simply shows that it's ganged with another one so that's two capacitors on a common shaft. In fact there are four capacitors in this radio but I'm only showing you the two that uh, relate to this part of the circuit. This little circuit, shown in red, I think is the most important part of the radio. The aerial will receive signals from all around the world and uh, it'll pick up interference, all sorts of rubbish, but only those frequencies that exactly match the tuned frequency of the tank circuit will be amplified. I've set up a little demonstration that I hope shows the way this circuit performs. There's a number of tuned circuits in the radio and I want to talk to you a little bit about uh, tuned circuits or tank circuits and uh, for that I'm going to be using this signal generator uh, the, uh, to represent the RF uh, input and I'm using this coil and this capacitor uh, as the tuned circuit. I have the uh, signal generator connected across the capacitor and uh, the coil so all three items are connected in parallel and then looking across that uh, 
coil and capacitor arrangement I've got the oscilloscope. Because this uh, signal generator is, only runs up to 1 MHz maximum, uh, the Q of this tank circuit is a little bit low to get a large deflection on the scope, but I don't want to go into Q uh, in, uh, in this discussion. Uh, but suffice it to say, um, the demonstration I'm going to give could be better. So if we look at the peaks of uh, this sine wave, as I, uh, and the capacitor is about half uh, engaged, as I increase the engagement so the peaks lower, as I come back to the high point they raise so this is in tune and as I uh, open the capacitance the frequency is going up and that uh, peak is reduced. I'll put some gain on that and do the same thing again. So now we're just looking at the very top of there. So hopefully you can see it's low, it peaks and then it goes low again. So what it's saying is when it's in tune, when the resonant frequency of this tune circuit matches the frequency being delivered from the source, uh, if you like the radio station, then we get the maximum voltage developed across this tank circuit. Uh, that's the important thing that I want to get across. I'll just change the setting of the scope and see if that uh, improves things. So the capacitor is half engaged and as I move away from that I've, I've fully engaged, it lowered the frequency, the peaks have all lowered, come back to the point where it's tuned and then move away. So you can see as the capacitors disengage the frequency has gone up, doesn't show on this because of the low Q and the low frequency that I'm working at. But looking at that peak, that's why radios work. So let's take a closer look at the tank circuit shown here in red. At first sight it looks a little complicated and that's because the typical standard construction of variable capacitor of this age has grounded variable vanes and they're of course connected to the shaft that runs along the middle of the capacitor. Because the capacitor has to be connected in the high voltage anode circuit, the circuit designer has added a series capacitor between the top of the variable capacitor and the top of the coil. The series capacitor passes RF signals but it blocks the HT DC from being grounded. The coil is fed in the middle of the winding and this has the effect of giving a bigger voltage swing to the tank circuit. Although at first sight it may look a little complicated, this red tank circuit can be resolved back to the basic single LC tank circuit that I showed you earlier and as shown here. Both circuits function in the same fashion. So the important thing here is only those frequencies that are in tune with the LC resonant circuit will be amplified. In this case the capacitance is variable and the radio operator searches the frequency band for the particular frequency they want to listen to. So you tune in the station that you want. In fact, if you took this LC circuit, put an aerial and a diode and a pair of headphones on it, you'd have a little crystal set and you'd be able to pick up uh, radio waves and listen to them. I hope you find this information interesting or helpful and uh, thank you for the positive feedback that I've been receiving. Thank you. It's all encouragement. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.